And now that deployment has completed successfully. So let's confirm that we have a new virtual machine that is running in our environment. So for that, we're gonna simply just go up here and click on Microsoft Azure at the top. And let's go to our section for virtual machines, which now has a shortcut here. And there we are, so it is running. Furthermore, we see what is the public IP address that is mapped to that WAN facing interface of the firewall. So typically I like to wait a couple of minutes until the firewall is fully functional and up and running before we try to access the web user interface of that firewall. But once the firewall is ready, then we should be able to access that web user interface of our firewall. So to do that, we need to make sure we copy that public IP address that is reflected here. Then let's go to a new tab here and do HTTPS followed by that IP address. Let's make a security exception here. Perfect. And for the username, it's going to be admin, not admins that we had to create during that process, followed by the password that we created. Perfect. And we are logged in. We can go through the setup wizard here, but we're not going to do that. We'll say later. Okay, so now we are logged in. We see that we have access to the services that are licensed among other monitoring details of the firewall with the memory CPU and the number of sessions through that firewall. So now with that deployment, let's go to the interface page. So for the FortiGate, we're gonna to go to network and go to interfaces. And there you will see that the ARM template pre-configured the inside and the outside interfaces for us based on this assigned virtual network that we defined choosing the next available IP address from that network. And what I talked about during the overview and design video, that the first available IP will always be dot four for the virtual networks. So dot one, dot two, and dot three are reserved for the Azure platform itself. 